Welcome to this video about gene set analysis. In this video we'll see how genes can be categorized into groups and how Fisher's test is used in gene set analysis. We'll also see how the method gene set enrichment analysis works. Gene set analysis involves a variety of methods that are usually used to test if genes that are involved in a certain pathway or biological process are overrepresented in a list of genes obtained from an experiment. The genes in the human genome can for example be divided into different biological processes. We here see four such biological processes. There are hundreds of different types of biological processes that have been defined. One such biological process defines the processes involved in the immune system. More than 1000 genes are involved in the immune system. Note that only 9 examples of genes are shown here. For example, the gene that codes for the cell surface protein CD28 on T cells is important for activating the adaptive immune system. The genes in the immune system can be further divided into more specific processes, such as activation of the immune system and antigen processing and presentation. Note that the same gene can be involved in several different biological processes. Genes can also be grouped based on other features, such as basic molecular functions, or the cellular location in which a gene product performs a function. The organization of genes into different categories is a result of the Gene Ontology project. Another project is the CAG database project, where genes have been associated with different types of pathways. For example, from the CAG database we can extract all genes that are involved in a T-cell receptor signaling pathway. Note that only a few examples of genes from this pathway are shown here. To understand gene set analysis, let's create a simple example. Suppose that these four biological processes were the only processes that were used in our analysis. We depict these four biological processes like this. Note that this process involves more than 1000 different genes, but to create a simple example we pretend that only these 9 genes are involved in the immune system process. Let's further suppose that there are in total only 20 genes in the human genome. Note that the same gene may appear in several biological processes. Our example genome that we have analyzed therefore consists of only 20 unique genes. Remember that this list of genes should include all the genes which you have analyzed in your experiment. This type of list is sometimes called background or reference. We therefore here call this list a reference list. If you have measured all genes in the genome, your reference list should include all genes in the genome. We then measure the expression of these 20 genes in 4 healthy individuals and 4 individuals with a certain disease. Now, suppose that the following 9 genes turned out to be differentially expressed between the two groups. By using gene set analysis, we like to test if one or more biological processes are overrepresented in this list of genes. Note that we here call the list my list. We can see that the genes involved in the immune system are overrepresented in my list, because 8 of the 9 genes in my list are involved in the immune system. Since the genes that are differentially expressed within the healthy individuals and the individuals with the disease include mainly genes involved in the immune system, this indicates that the disease might be due to some kind of immune system disorder. So, is there a way to determine if the genes involved in the immune system are significantly overrepresented in my list? This is where Fisher's exact test comes in. To run Fisher's exact test, we first need to create a 2x2 two two table. The rows define if a gene is included in a certain biological process or not, whereas the columns define if a gene is included or not included in my list of genes. We'll now test if one or several of the biological processes are overrepresented in my list. We start to test if the DNA repair genes are significantly overrepresented in my list of genes. We can see that my list only includes one gene that is involved in the DNA repair system. Since only about 11% of my genes are involved in DNA repair, whereas 20% of the genes in our reference list are involved in DNA repair, 
This shows that my list is not enriched with DNA repair genes. However, let's compute Fisher's test so that we know how it works. My list only includes one gene that is involved in a DNA repair process. Out of the total genes that are involved in the DNA repair process, three genes are not included in my list. Eight of the genes in my list are not involved in DNA repair. Out of the 20 genes in the reference list, eight genes are not included in my list and are not included in DNA repair. The p-value from a one-sided Fisher's exact test is about 0.93. Watch my video about Fisher's exact test to see how an exact p-value is calculated. Now, let's check if the genes that are involved in the immune system are significantly overrepresented in my list. Since about 89% of the genes in my list include genes that are involved in the immune system, whereas only 45% of the genes in the reference list includes genes that are involved in the immune system, this indicates that the genes involved in the immune system are overrepresented in my list. My list includes 8 genes that are involved in the immune system. Out of the total number of genes that are involved in the immune system, only one gene is not included in my list. Only one gene in my list is not involved in the immune system. Out of the 20 genes in the reference list, 10 genes are neither included in my list nor included in the immune system. If we run the one-sided Fisher's exact test on this data, we'll get a p-value of about 0 0.00059. Note that we should only include the genes in the reference list that are associated with the gene ontology term. For example, if our reference list includes a gene that is not involved in any of the biological processes that have been included in the analysis, it should be excluded when we compute Fisher's exact test. Once we have computed Fisher's exact test for all four biological processes and sorted them based on the p-values, we'll have the following table. To determine if there is a significant overrepresentation of genes, one usually adjusts the p-values due to multiple comparisons. A common method to adjust the p-values in gene set analysis is to use the Benjamini Hochberg method. Watch my video about the Benjamin Hochberg method to get a full understanding of how to adjust the p-values based on the force discovery rate. m is equal to 4 in this example since we have computed 4 p-values and k is the rank of the corresponding p-value. After we have adjusted the p-values according to the Benjamin Hochberg's procedure, we'll have the following adjusted p-values. Usually one uses a cutoff value of 0.05 in order to control the force discovery rate below 5%. This means that we accept that approximately 5% of the associations are false positives. Since this p-value is less than 0.05, we can conclude that the genes involved in the immune system process are significantly overrepresented in my list of genes. This indicates that the disease is somehow associated with the immune system. Note that if we would do the same analysis in a real study, we will probably analyze thousands of genes. And our list will probably consist of more than 100 differentially expressed genes. That would be compared to hundreds of different biological processes or pathways. Note that your list of genes does not have to be a list of differentially expressed genes. The list may contain genes that you have extracted based on any type or metric in your experiment. We'll now have a look at a similar type of analysis which is called gene set enrichment analysis. In gene set enrichment analysis, we do not use a list of genes that have been extracted based on some previous analysis. Instead, we use a list of all the genes that were included in our analysis. For example, even though the gene DDF6 was not significantly expressed when the health controls were compared to the individuals with the disease, it should still be included in the list. The list is then sorted based on, for example, the log2 food change in expression within the disease group and the control group. Genes at the top of this list are therefore upregulated genes that have a much higher expression in the disease group compared to the healthy control group, whereas the downregulated genes are at the bottom of this list. These genes have a much lower expression in the disease group compared to the healthy control group. 
By using this sorted list, one can then for example analyze if genes in a certain biological process are enriched in the top and or in the bottom of the sorted list. For example, we here see that the genes involved in the immune system are enriched at the top and bottom of this list, which indicates that there is an association between the disease and the immune system. Note that you can order the list of genes based on any appropriate metric. The importance is that you order the genes before you start to analyze how the genes are distributed in this list. If you would have a much larger list of genes that have been ranked based on, for example, the food change, I mark the genes that are involved in the immune system with black bars along this list. We see that most of the highly upregulated genes in the disease group are involved in the immune system, which is true also for the most downregulated genes. Most genes that have a similar expression between the disease group and the health of controls are not involved in the immune system. The enrichment score from left to right increases when the frequency of genes for a certain biological process is higher than would be expected due to chance, and decreases when the frequency of genes from a given biological process is lower than would be expected due to chance. A p-value is then calculated based on how much the distribution deviates from a distribution where the genes are just randomly ordered. Finally, I will show a simple example of a gene set analysis by using the Gorilla tool. Note that there are a range of different gene set analysis tools out there. The reason why I decided to show this tool is that it is simple to use and it generates the exact same p-values that we have calculated previously. I recommend that you select a tool that is up to date and active. Ok, so once you have entered this page, you follow these three steps, where the first step is to select the relevant organism, and then we select whether we like to run gene set enrichment analysis with one ranked list, or gene set analysis based on Fish's test where we have two lists of genes. Let's try Fish's exact test first. So, you see that we here have two boxes where the target set corresponds to my list, which includes the genes that were significantly expressed when the disease group was compared to the control group. The box for the background should include all the genes that were analyzed in our experiment, which correspond to the reference list in our example. And then we choose which type of gene ontology category we like to use. We'll here only use the category biological processes. Next, we run the analysis. So, as you see, we have a few hits here where we can find the immune system process that we have discussed earlier at place number 6. And we can see that the p-value here is exactly the same as the one we calculated earlier. These are the adjusted p-values based on the Benjamin Hochberg method. Where this value here has been calculated based on the fact that 1199 biological processes have been evaluated in the gene set analysis. The adjusted p value has therefore been adjusted based on these 1199 biological processes. We can see that none of the adjusted p values are less than 0 0.05. And if we click here, we'll find all the genes in my list that are involved in the immune system. So, we can also run gene set enrichment analysis, where we select this option here. In this case, we only need one list of genes, which has been sorted based on some metric. To get an example of such a list, we can go here, and click here, and we copy this list of genes. And then we go back and paste it here. So now we have a ranked list of genes. But the genes at the bottom of this list are probably the most downregulated genes. Whereas the genes at the top of this list are probably the most upregulated genes. So let's run the analysis again. Okay, so. We can see that most of the significant biological processes are associated with some sort of cell cycling process. This indicates that the genes involved in cell cycling are enriched at the top and or at the bottom of the list we have provided. So, this was the end of this lecture. Thanks for watching!